Hi guys, welcome to another video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter O'Neill and in this video I'm going to show you some of my car boot sale buys. First, first buy I'm going to show you is this beautiful Italian leather armchair. Um, now I was out, I told you I done Cavatha Castle Saturday. Well from there um, I bought really well in Cavatha. But I finished early because of the weather so I thought I'll pop down to Cardiff. I went down to Spot Market and I bought one or two pieces down there. And surprisingly I had gold at 11 o'clock in the afternoon in Spot Market. And I'll give you a little look at the few bits of jewellery I did manage to pick up. Um, and then I went across the Bessemer Road and the car was already rammed full to the ceiling. I had loads. Work in stock and some quality items. Um, and I goes over to some Irish fellows in the van. And they have all three piece suites um, outside in Bessemer Road in the Drizzle. And he had the most beautiful Italian red brown leather three piece suite. Two armchairs and a settee all reclining. Um, and I asked him how much. And he's oh, £350 for the set. And after 10 minutes of haggling with him saying, I don't want the set. I just want one chair to go in my office. Um, he came down £250 for the set. I said, I don't want it. And I started to walk away. And he said, well, I ain't letting your money walk away. I bought 150 for one chair. And I said, you've got no chance. Um, I said, I'm just looking for a scruffy old chair to go in my office. Fact, you've got Italian leather, doesn't matter, it's a nice chair. But I just want a cheap chair to go in my office. Anyway, after 10 or 15 minutes, every time I tried to walk away, he wouldn't let me. It was too expensive for me in the beginning, and he wouldn't let me walk away. In the end, we agreed 50 quid. Um... Now, the chair was still wrapped. Um, it's got a little bit of wear on the one seat by year, um, where it just needs a polish. But they still had all the cellophane on the footrest and on the headrest and everything. Um, and he gave it to me 50 quid. Now, we were in Sandra's car on Saturday, not in my car, because uh, I was still fully loaded up from work on a Thursday, and I didn't want to unload and reload to work Sunday, because I didn't need the car. Excuse me. Um, so, <laughs> very nicely said to Sandra, can I put a chair on your roof? No roof rack now, mind. So I said, can I turn it upside down, put a leather side down, and just strap it to the roof and drive home? Up a motorway, by the way. So I looked at, I don't know if you ever watched the Beverly Hillbillies, um, but that's what it was like. It was a scene of that, me driving up the M4 motorway, 50 mile an hour with a bloody leather chair strapped to the roof um, of a car and the car full of um, working stock. So we looked apart. But this chair is heavy. Um, so Sandra's husband came down the house and he helped me get her in the office and that. Um, so I'm going to give you a little look at the chair and then I'm going to show you some of the bits that I had besides then. For, I got a variety. Good stock, some working stock, uh, some silver, some gold. It's going to be a really good video this one guys. It's going to be a long one but it's going to be a really good video. Anyway, I'm going to get to show you the chair. Okay, first things first, this cushion here didn't come with it. It was a little gift off Sandra for me. And it is the best antiques are old friends and it's all embroidered. And it's a nice little pillow that looks lovely on the chair. So we got, a, it's a red brown, it's a slight combination of the two. I wouldn't call it brown, I wouldn't call it red. Leather. Um, Italia sofa. So it's all Italian leather. It's really, really nice. Lovely condition, as you can see. And it's not even a manual recliner. It is a remote control. Look at that, guys. Now, I got the options but there. Now I can chill, sit in the chair, read one of my books. Um, or, as you've seen over the last uh, few weeks, I've sat in the chair, last few weeks, where am I? Last few days I've sat in the chair to make um, my uh, vlogs. So when I'm chatting to you now, or showing you the stock now, I can film it from in the office, sit on my chair, put a little table in front, put the pieces up. Uh, but this was the first buy, I paid £50 for it. Um, you may think it's a lot of money, but for a pure Italian leather armchair reclining, it's really not. Um, I've had a look. Some of these 
uh, three piece sweets are thousands to buy as a three piece sweet new. So as you can see, I'm really happy with that. And just to give you a little look, it really does look the part in my room. Here's the bits and bobs I'm gonna show you this morning. So we'll get to it now guys. So there we are, that's the first of the uh, buys. As you can see, I couldn't leave it there. I had to chuck her on the roof. Didn't do no damage to the car, it was leather, but uh, I want it for my office. Now my office is complete. Just got a little bit of work to do to finish off the photograph studio, but the photos are beautiful on the, you know, the melamine plywood. Really nice. Office is, it's there guys. I'm really happy. Anyway, I'm going to start with my first piece. Now what we have here is a Japanese turquoise glazed um, pottery vase. It's from 1880 through to 1900, 1910, and it has a dragon in high relief all the way around. You can see there the dragon sticking out off the body. Now I've had these in Worcester, I've had them in Chinese porcelain. This one happens to be Japanese, as I said, turn the century or just before. It's in really good condition. There's the base. Now, I paid a fiver for you guys up in Kavartha Castle. Now I, I bought that and I thought, a vase like that is going to be £75, no problem whatsoever. Um, then I come home and I had a look on eBay. Now, the, this price on here is unrealistic in my opinion, however, show you what someone else is asking for the pay. That's the pair they got guys, the exact same vase as what I have. They have a pair, but they want 1200 for the pair. And to zoom in and give you a couple of just the images of the item, if they got a single. Uh, if they got a single. Right, well for starters, there's an image of their foot, just so you can see the foot. And there's mine. As you can see, they're identical, uh, neither of which are signed. They have the same turquoise glaze and the exact same body shape. I was trying to find... Um, right. There we go guys. So there you have it, the exact same shape as on the uh, ones they're asking 1200 for. And the one I got, believe it or not, is in really, really nice condition. It's no chips, no cracks, no hairlines, nothing. So, a real nice buy. So even if I said 100, 125, 145, compared to 1200 for a pair, a pair is worth more than a single. So, half of the pair is 600, and then take a third off that again, because if they got a pair, so you're talking, they're, they're looking really three to four hundred pound of ours. I'll be happy for 150 for this vase. Um, Oriental pieces are pulling real good money at the moment, more Chinese than Japanese. However, you don't see these dragon vases that often. So I am happy with it. So that's one for the website, guys, antiquesarena.com. It's not going on eBay. Next piece we have is a beautiful piece of hand-painted satin glass. Now it has the beautiful soft pink, the clear glass uh, twisted handle and all the opaque enamels and yellow enamels hand-painted onto this. It has a snapped pontal. Now if you want to know what a pontal mark is, I've actually uh, done a video identifying the different pontal marks. Uh, a pontal mark is where it's blown on a glass rod, then they snap it off. When they snap it off, that's called a pontal mark. Um, now you have polished where they clean it smooth, you have sharp where they just snap it and leave it, or you have a tool mark which is where they use a tool and it leaves like a letter T. Um, that's just a few of them. This one has a snapped pontal. Uh, it's 19th century satin glass. It's 1860 through to 1880-ish. Beautiful condition. Needs a wash. Uh, other than that, lovely ruffled rim 
Uh, you got the clear, the opaque, the pink satin, the yellow, the blue, the, the white enamel. It's a lot of colours in this vase. And it really is a beautiful piece. And I can guarantee you, once I wash it and photograph it on the white background, it's going to look beautiful. Um, i trying to think what he charged me for it. It wasn't a lot of money. I think it was £6 I paid for it. Um, it was around 5 or £6 anyway. It wasn't a lot of money. And considering it's perfect, you know, a really nice piece of glass, guys, for the money. Uh, if you haven't dealt in satin glass vase, have a look at Victorian satin glass. Um, and you'll see it does pull some good money. Next piece here guys. Original leather pouch. Original for the item which is rare. Normally you see boxes and the items match with the box. But this is original to the item. You open it up and I have a set of six of the finest Victorian uh, napkin rings. Now he's simply put a silver with a question mark with £10 label. Now, I didn't pay £10, I paid £6. So it's a pound a napkin ring guys. £6. In the original Victorian leather box. And they are exquisite. Now they're not hallmarked. They're going to have to be acid tested. But I've looked at them under an eyeglass. And there is, even with this scratching, there is no colour coming through. No yellow coming through. They're white all the way through. So the likelihood is these are going to be silver. However, even if they're silver plate, for a set like this at £6, silver plate set is going to be £30, £35. If they're silver, you're talking is a lot of money here. Um, for 120 quid, £140 worth if they're silver. Um, £6. What can I say? Well... It was a good day buying. We're not over yet though. What we have here is an absolutely beautiful uh, and rare mug. It's a two-handled mug or a loving mug. And it reads on the back of the inscription, God bless you Tommy Atkins, here's your country's love to you. And South Africa, 1898 to 1900. So I think that's the Boer War. And the maker's mark is Alavale. There you go, is the maker's mark, guys. There's the inscription on the back. Now, I paid a tenner for this mug. This one didn't come in cheap. But you know what? The last time I saw one of these, they were buying it at 65. I've actually seen these before, and I knew they pulled money. So, as I said, the last one I saw these was being purchased was £65. Um, I've had a little bit of research, the price has varied slightly on them, but I've got no problem getting £45, £50 for this little mug. It is rare. The soldier is in relief, he's raised up a good 4 or 5 mil, as are all the flowers, um, and it's slip decorated. It's a real nice, loving mug. Um, and as I say, I paid a tenner for it, but I love pieces with history, and this really does have a bit of history. What do I say? Right, we'll do good first. I've had another bronze Victorian court hook. You can see the uh, price there. All of two pound, guys. And I'll be funny, that's a kilo, kilo and a half of brass. It's three or four quid, a scrap if I wanted to weigh that in. Brass or bronze, whichever one. It's hard to tell on some of this older metal because of the colours different on the brass and the bell metal and the bronze. Um, but that really is quality. Um, Two quid. It's going to be 20 quid again. No problem whatsoever. Then I had a pair of early copper or bronze again, whichever way you want to look at these. I'm not 100%. Ashtrays. Now this one is Gladstone and this one is Salisbury. So former Prime Ministers for England or Britain. If you're into political memorabilia, the, this pair of ashtrays are perfect. Now, I paid a fiver for the pair. What are they going to be worth? I don't know, 10 or 15 quid each. There's no problem whatsoever there. 
and they got a little something about them. Here we have a beautiful little uh, leaf, campus leaf dish. Uh, <coughs> he's put it down as a cannabis leaf dish. Yeah, maybe, I doubt it. Uh, anyway, there we have, it's a leaf dish. Um, silver plate. However, there's something particularly special about this. I'm going to show you the price first. Two pound again. Now it's not silver, before you get excited. However, it does bear the mark of the German factory WMF. Don't ask me to pronounce their full name, guys. You've got zero hope of that. I cannot pronounce it. I know it, but do you think I can say it? Nope. And this is the Ecora range. EPNS on brass. So we have a piece here of WMF metalware for two pounds. With all due respects, WMF is one of the best names. You're talking 15 or 20 pounds for that little dish. Now WMF, you can have options. They'll either have the W over the M and F, or they'll have a stalk or a bird, which is the early mark. And they do glass, they do silver, they do uh, all sorts. Uh, but WMF, especially the WMF glass from the 30s, they do a lamp um, where there's a bulb outside and inside, and that looks spectacular. I've had those in the past. But look out for WMF, guys. That's a really good uh, make. Now, everything here, you can knock a pound off. So all the prices that are on the items knock a pound off because that's what I had for buying bulk. So that one's priced at three, I added for two. And you can see the size of that and we have a large Victorian or early Victorian serving spoon. Only silver plate, but for two quid, for two pounds, um, you know, that's 10 or 20 quid of anybody's money being um, Victorian or early Victorian. I've had a couple of real nice silver plate ladles. This one particularly, again, is a Victorian example. And again, guys, two quid for a ladle of that size. And again, there you go, two quid. They're real easy to sell, guys, no problem whatsoever. You okay, Daniel? Yeah. Okay, Bibs. We then went to a little straining ladle, priced up at two quid, so it would have cost me a pound. But this one, I'm not 100%, I think this one is silver. Uh, I'm going to have to check the marks, there's foreign marks on there. It's dated 1926, I'm going to have to check the marks out. Um, but we have a really, really elegant little straining uh, spoon here. We have a large selection of solid silver. If you look there, you'll see there's the hallmarks. Again, guys, little cheese knife, a pound. Marked up a two, so knock the pound off, a pound. Fully hallmarked. Again. What have we got? This one's a bread knife, apparently. So we have a large bread knife, fully hallmarked again. There you go. With the Victorian lozenge mark, so quite an early one. Is it, a lozenge? it looks like a lozenge mark. Um, may have to get my eyeglass out, it may be a maker's mark, but it's got a full set of hallmarks. And that one was three pounds. This one here is a large tea caddy scoop. Um, it's in silver plate, EPNS Sheffield, but it cost me a pound. Now, most tea caddy spoons are that big. Look at the difference. This one would be for a serious box, caddy box, um, almost a shop version if you like. I haven't seen one before, and it was a pound. Here we have a spoon, down as a serving spoon for a pound, so this one would have been a pound, it wouldn't have knocked anything off that. However, 
That's Chris Toffel, solid silver. When he looked, there's no marks whatsoever at the back of the uh, spoon. But what he didn't do was look inside the bowl. There's a mark there and a mark there. And this is Chris Toffel and it is solid silver. Let me see if I can get the mark for you. Mark's right by there on the one. I don't know how it's coming up, but guys. But always check in the bowl as well, because sometimes they'll impress the marks in the bowl. So that is a silver spoon for a pound. Uh, I think I had another piece of Christopher. Yes, I did. Same again, a pound, large fork. You see the marks impressed there and down the bottom there. Again, it's Christoffel and it is silver. So they'll begin um, put in and into my uh, silver. Now this one here is like a toasting fork, but he's put it down as a fish. It is a fish fork. It's got a fish engraved on it. So he's put it down as a fish fork for one pound fifty. It has a registration number on there of one seven two six eight one. So you're talking. About 1890 in date, somewhere around there. It's really, really nice quality, heavy. Uh, it's not stamped EPNS, not stamped silver. So I'm going to acid test this one because it has a feel of being silver. Um, I won't do it now, but I will let you know how it comes out. But it's a really good weight. Um, and normally you see all the brass coming through on the fork itself where the acids off the fish and things eat into the silver. So, with a bit of luck, this one's going to be solid. And it does look quality enough. So we'll see. Fingers crossed on that one, guys. Next set, guys, is a set of six spoons. Uh, they marked up at eight pound, but I actually gave them six, which was a pound a spoon. Now, they are 1920s, to look at them, Art Deco. Real nice shape. Uh, they have this sort of engine turned finish. And they're stamped up uh, Chiodea Silver. So, I can't even pronounce it. Now, I'm not sure if it's like Nevada Silver and that type of thing, which would be either seriously low grade silver or silver plate. Um, but a pound a spoon for a set of six Art Deco spoons. Um, I'm going to do the research. Uh, find out if they're silver or silver plate and I may even acid test them if I can't find much out on this company. Um, but a set of six spoons, I'm not going to lose if I bang them out to 12 quid on eBay. But if there's a chance that they're silver, then there's a lot of weight there. Um, so, got to check. Again, we have a very large, um, I think it's cake knife. Uh, he's just got a sterling handle knife and he's got it marked at four quid. So that's his description. Sterling silver handle cake knife or knife. Four quid, I paid three. Now this one, looking at it, is quite an early one. Love the shape. Love this big uh, protector he has here at the front. And uh, lovely plain handle. Um, fully hallmarked on the side there. Sterling silver. So again, a really nice buy. As you can see, I've had some real nice pieces uh, today, guys. Um, a few more pieces left by here that I want to show you. The first of which um, is a postcard. Now, I paid £3 for this postcard. It's marked at 4 but I paid £3 for it. Um, and I, that's a lot of money to pay for a single postcard. I wouldn't normally pay it. However, um, the man had done me a serious good deal on everything else and I thought, well, I'll take your chance. Um, and he had quite a bit of information for me on this piece. Now, you can see there, he had four quid on it, but I had it for three. Now, what we have here is a postcard of Patsy Hendren. Um, who was captain of Brentford Football Club in 1926-1927 and Middlesex County Cricket Club. Um, so he was obviously head of both, or played for both. And he signed it down the centre down there. Now it's an original autograph, 
Whether it's his or not is hard to tell. Right? I'm not an expert on autographs by any means, but I can tell the difference between a printed signature and a real signature. Uh, you're looking for the crossover on the lines and things, uh, and the depth of the ink. Um, but this is an early postcard, so it's of the period, it's a 19, late 20s, early 30s postcard. Um, as I've said, of both him as a cricket player and a football player, and he's signed it. So, as a bit of memorabilia, sports memorabilia, I may bang that on auction for 12 quid and see where it goes. I'm failing that if they don't sell on auction, I'll frame it up, chuck it out for a fiver. I'll buy a frame on a car boot for a 50p with a picture in, rip the picture out, chuck this in, 50 pence framed up, and it'll go for a fiver or tenner. So either way, I'm on a win-win. Um, if you ever need to frame anything up, guys, never ever go to a shop and buy a frame. You can pay three, four, five pound in a cheap shop for a cheap frame, or you can go to a proper framers and pay 10, 20, 30, or up a couple of hundred pounds for a frame. Do you know, you can go to a car boot sale, you can buy a mirror, you can buy old pictures, old prints. You can buy a Victorian frame with a Victorian print in it for three quid, two or three quid. Take the print out, resell the print for a pound or two, and use the, uh, use the frame. Common sense. Um, it's the same when I'm uh, when I'm out and about and I want to frame stuff up. I don't buy mounts. The mount is the little bit that borders the picture in the frame. I go out and I buy all the old frames for ten pence or twenty pence, and I, I add up all the mounts, and then I have a box of mounts, and I'll match up a mount to go with the picture if I want to sell that picture. So just a little tip for you there, guys. Next year we have a set of six. They are menu holders or place set in holders so if you go to an event or a dinner party your name will be in front of the chair these are little solid brass shells they have the slit at the top so you would literally just put your let's see if I can get this to go in there you go you would just put your name in like so and then people would know where they sit in obviously you'd have it larger and these are really good heavy pieces, so they would really support a nice size card. So, it's six of these. They're really nicely cast, and they have a bit of age. You can see a bit of green income in there. They've got a bit of age. Um, now, I paid four quid for the six. But a little play set in holders like that, you know, if you set a five or a piece, 10, 20. 30 quid for the six. Shouldn't be a problem at 30 quid for the six, guys. Really like those. Um, but they are from someone who does dinner parties and things, or someone who entertains. So they're really, they're quirky, they're nice. And along the same line there, we have... Little cheese menus. So basically, you would have a card, there you go, and that's how it would sit. They are SIA, S-I-L-E-A, SILIA. So I'm not sure if they're silver or if they're plate, I'm going to have to have a look into that. I think they're silver plate. Um, but I have four. So depending on what cheese you like, Philly cheese or cheddar cheese, wherever, blue cheese. There's four little blocks of cheese on spikes with a little mouse climbing up the side. It's really, really sweet. They're all in lovely condition and they were £3 for the four. So again, if I banged the four out on eBay for 12 quid, they're going to sell no problem whatsoever and um, possibly run. Or when I test or do the research on the maker, they could turn out to be silver. You never know. Um, going to move on to the jewellery now guys, so if you bear with me for just a second, you'll have a little close up of some of the jewellery I've bought. Okay guys, I'm, uh, I'm going to leave it there for this video, um, I'm going to call it there at the, um, the little cheese uh, blocks. I do have a lot of jewellery, but what I've decided, I'm going to put the jewellery into another film for you for tomorrow, because I've got quite a bit of it, uh, so I'm going to make another film out of the jewellery, as opposed to piling it all into this one. There's been some beautiful pieces in this, uh, from the Japanese vase, the little um, memorial wall tankard and so forth. 
Um, so I'm really happy with the contents of the video. Some of it is working stock, some of it is going to be put away precious metal. And we have a few pieces there that are going on to antiquesarena.com. Um, I've got quite a considerable amount of jewellery, mostly silver. Um, I've had a job lot of silver rings in, I've got a little bit of gold. Some come in on the Saturday, some come in on the Sunday. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you the job lot of the jewellery. So hopefully you'll enjoy seeing that. But what I'll do, I'll give it more time and give it his own video so that it's... It's given what is it's old. So hopefully guys you've enjoyed this video. Um, sorry if you were looking forward to seeing the silver and gold on this video. You'll have to see it tomorrow. <laughs> um, but I'm not going nowhere. It'll be on. If you did like it I would appreciate the like and the share guys. Um, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification link. Thank you uh, very much for watching. Uh, you'll find us on Facebook Antiques Arena. We're on eBay Antiques Arena Clearance. And we have our own website, antiquesarena.com. Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> Bye for now.